Hi everyone, Bernard here. I hope you're all staying safe and well. And welcome to the Citizen Channel and another episode of the Streets Around Main Road. Yeah, this is episode four of this little feature. Uh, in 1977, uh, the Manchester City Council, very clever people there at that, that time, not too sure about now, but uh, named a number of streets in a new estate in Moss Side after the famous city players. We've also already looked at... Uh, Fred Tilson, Billy Meredith, Tommy Johnson. Today we're going to look at Sam or Sammy Cookson. Yes, and we've got uh, Sammy Cookson close. M14 for JZ. Z, I'm English and I'm not going to say Z. I know the kids do now, but uh, in my day it was Z for JZ. Please, if you're new to this channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notification so these blogs are coming out. City Pass, City Pass vlogs at the moment as I'm recording this, as it's mid season, but uh, lots of City present as well coming up in the 21 22 season. So please check that out. You'll also see some stuff on my film and TV channel if you want to have a rest from football. And please see links on screen for Facebook and Twitter. You follow a friend me on there. I do check every couple of days and follow and friend everyone back and post loads of stuff on there and i have a little little website moviegamenostalgia.com where i sell a lot of old uh well not old 90s 2000s movie posters if you've got any famous actors or favorite actors or films from that time uh, i check that out and uh, do some dvds and board games as well on there so that's moviegamenostalgia.com you can have a look at that that'd be fantastic Please, all your comments are welcome on there. Mr. Cookson, yeah, any memories you have? Um, yeah, a little special mention in a moment to uh, some gentlemen. But if you have any comments on Mr. Mr. Cookson or anything to do with City, just let us know. And of course, if you can't comment or if you are commenting, it just doesn't matter. Just give us a thumbs up. Any thumbs ups are nice as well. It's nice to get views, but it's nice to get a thumbs up. Yeah, I was just mentioning there. Yeah, and Mike Cookson uh, commented on one of my other um, streets around Main Road vlogs and asking if I, if I was going to be doing one, of course, on his great uncle. Yeah, so Mike, this this is uh, uh, dedicated to you as well and as well as your great uncle. So uh, uh, special mention for uh, Mike Cookson who asked, that, who asked that. And of course, I did say, of course, I would be doing it. He's obviously one of the streets, of course, I so there we go yeah fullbacks often often unsung heroes uh be one myself at school i was our right back for our school team uh should have gone for trials for manchester boys at right back but my dad wouldn't allow it for whatever reason i was a bit poorly at the time but uh I would have still gone, but I wasn't allowed because obviously there's nothing to be, you know, there's nothing in football, is it? You know, you want to take up a trade or you want you want to want to study hard at school and become a, become an accountant or something like that. So I never got that opportunity. But uh, yeah, when I when I progressed to playing Sunday league football and Saturday league football, etc. etc. Uh, by the age of fifteen, I was playing for pub teams. Uh, I used to get a bit of a a bit of um what's the word? A bit of uh, nastiness from the wingers who, who used to threaten me if I tackled him as a, as a right back at 15 in some of these pub leagues but that's par for the course I suppose but there you go so today we're going to talk about a full back yeah we're going to talk about uh, a number two of course uh, was my favourite number two is obviously going to be Mr Tony Buck but I don't think this this guy's going to be far behind uh, based on what I've already read about him and with his number three partner at the time Eli Fletcher uh, which uh, that's another one for the future. Uh, it was reckoned to be the best uh, fullback pairing we've ever had. I mean, it's, uh, certainly, it's uh, in the by the mid seventies, and certainly, certainly between now. I mean, I know, I know we've had some great teams recently, haven't we? But uh, I'll be struggling to think past Buck and Pardo, to be honest with you, on even in recent times. Uh, so yes, yeah, Samuel Cooks and Sammy was born in Manchester, twenty second of November, eighteen ninety six. Uh, Samuel Cookson was born. Uh, Sam Cookson, as a local lad, uh, was uh, born within a stone's throw where the Etihad is now. So it was. It wouldn't have been far away. Obviously, it wasn't the Etihad then in in eighteen ninety six. But uh, there you go. You were at the pits in that in that area, the Bradford area, it's called of, of Manchester. Uh, it could have even worked the seams, couldn't you? But I, I think they had to do various things when they built the Etihad, and obviously with the beam mining in the region, and they, you know, he could have even worked those seams underneath or be at all near near where the Etihad now stands. So that could be quite interesting. So a good link this one, isn't it, to to what we have now. Uh, his desire, in fact, his desire to play football. I mean, sometimes we talk about these older footballers and they sort of fall into these into, into playing football, don't they? But uh, he had a big desire to play football. And he, he actually took a pay cut. He actually took a pay cut. He could have earned more staying down the mine. He took a pay cut to join the Blues uh, to 
to fulfil his football dreams. He signed as an amateur in October 1918, so just after the First World War ended, and went professional the following season. His debut, New Year's Day, a good day, yeah. I don't think he'd had too many the night before. I think he'd probably played all right. They kept a clean sheet. Anyway, in 1920, New Year's Day 1920, a 1-0 win against Bradford City. There you go, there's a coincidence down the Bradford Mines and a game against Bradford City. All right, so two different places, mind you, but there you go. And that was, of course, at Hyde Road in 1920. Obviously, the last two or three seasons at Hyde Road. In front of an estimated crowd of 30,000, which uh, isn't, certainly wasn't bad, was it? Another City legend, uh, Max Woosnam, debuted the same day and uh, they did become firm friends. Yeah, he enjoyed the challenge of, of wingers and uh, one of his favourite little little things was the good old-fashioned shoulder charge, which I believe he's very, very good at. He's a bit of a master at that, I was told. And he sort of got, got, away, got away with uh, a lot more those days than the perhaps they do now but uh, he was only five foot eight he's almost, almost a big about five five foot eight and a half i've seen him uh, quoted as being uh, but obviously working down the pits etc he's quite a, a stocky lad he's quite a heavily built bloke uh, so obviously he used he used that power and stuff uh, that he'd, he'd, he'd gained from his obviously time down the pit and being a, a big st uh, a sort of chunk not what's the word chunky see it's just stocky and well built isn't it for a five foot eight sort of hardened him up and uh, many wingers didn't like playing against him because of this because he was uh, quite good at what he did in his first full season 2021 season 2021 he played every game and City finished runners up then to Burnley in the in the first division that was our highest position uh, since being runners up in 1904 of course of course it would be the later 30s before we actually got our first league title but uh, yeah not not too bad at all not too shabby at all runners up to Burnley I think we're about four points behind uh, from memory uh, it was sadly denied an FA Cup winners medal in 1926 and of course we were beaten 1-0 in the final against Bolton although we took them to the cleaners unfortunately yeah Bolton managed to sort of uh, win that one against us a bit of revenge for obviously the one in 1904 wasn't it uh, yeah but I think the FA Cup was more memorable certainly for Sam for Sammy as uh, as he was uh, Sam or Sammy was uh, he actually only scored his own one and only competitive goal in that run to the FA Cup final? I think it was in the third round against Corinthians. He actually scored a goal in the three-three draw, uh, and that was only because an injury uh, caused him to be moved further up the field. They say, say left backs and right backs. You didn't. Get, they got nosebleeds if they went across the halfway line in those days. So that's why they didn't score many goals. But uh, he was moved on to the wing, and uh, it didn't hinder him because he managed to uh, crack home. A goal in this set 3-3 draw obviously we, we took them back to Hyde Road and, and won the replay uh, to add a little bit of insult to that and say we didn't we ended up with the cup losers medals there's still a, still a couple of league games to go that season as well and uh, it looked okay for City. Uh, it didn't look a total disaster. We were near the bottom, but we looked as though, we, you know, if we, if we could do all right, we'd be safe. But uh, we only had to sort of uh, sort of hang, win our last game, if you like, and obviously other teams had to lose. But it all went all went against us. We lost on on a goal on a goal average that was very minute, etc., etc. So of course, to add insult to injury, poor poor Sammy Cooks, and uh, not only did he only get a losers' medal, which in itself was a good thing in those days nothing wrong with the losers medal but uh, he had the ignominy of actually uh, being in the relegated Manchester City team as well and he'd also been a regular uh, of course in back in 1923 when City played their first game at uh, at uh, Main Road obviously back in 1923 before this cup final so uh, he'd been a regular and played that season 1923 at the, the first uh, season at Main Road uh, yeah, in 26-27, that was his last season, the season after losing the FA Cup final. Uh, that was his last, he was out again and ever present, and that would be his last full season at City. He actually played his uh, last game for City the season after on Boxing Day 1927. Uh, and then, then there was a big gap. He had a bit of an injury, couldn't quite make it back. And on September the 28th, 1928, so obviously over a year later, he was transferred to Bradford Park Avenue. So there you go. He also had suffered a little bit from rheumatism, which perhaps didn't help. Perhaps that was brought on from the mining work he did early on. I'm not too sure on that one. After five years at Bradford, he retired. He actually 
Uh, had a couple of pubs, and one of the pubs he run was the Swan with Two Necks at uh, Shude Hill. Now, that when I worked at the co-op in Manchester, that was our every Friday afternoon. That's where we used to go, and we used to spend some nights there as well. So we had many, many a good hour. Obviously, a few years after this gentleman had been there, but uh, yeah, great, great little pub. I used to enjoy going there, and uh, uh, obviously all the guy, all the guys from Seedle, yes, that was sort of their regular pub where where we used to go. Uh, sadly, yeah, while he was there, while he was working there, uh, the, the place was robbed and his, his loser's medal, his FA Cup loser's medal was actually stolen. And he, he was actually physically attacked in the pub, which obviously uh, did put him off because he sort of uh, got out of the pub trade. But uh, his actual shirt from that match, fortunately, still uh, was still intact and was actually donated by the family to uh, City's Football Museum. I'm not 100% sure if it's still there. I'm sure it's still there now. Uh, it was then lured back to football. Yeah, he let he sort of uh, lured back to football. Perhaps perhaps tackling wingers was was far less dangerous than tackling robbers. It probably probably was uh, to be honest with you. And he joined Barnsley, where at nearly forty he actually helped them to a, a third division championship title. So a, a nice fitting uh, winner's medal, if you like, uh, to to end his career. After retiring from football, uh, he went to live near Main Road, literally, literally yards from where Sammy Cooks and Close is now. So again, another one of those, uh, as in as in the the Bradford Pit and the Etihad, etc., etc. Another one of those coincidences that you sometimes get in this sort of thing. Uh, so his career for City spanned between nineteen eighteen and nineteen twenty eight. He made three hundred and six appearances in League and Cup. And he just scored the one goal, which we've talked about, which is not bad, not bad for a for a right back to get one goal. I mean, even I didn't. All the, the only goal I scored as a right back at school was an own goal. There you go. That's about that's about sums it up, doesn't it? Because in, even in the sixties, we weren't allowed to progress much past the halfway line, and obviously things weren't much different in the twenties. Uh, you know, when uh, Sammy Cookson was playing. He sadly died on the seventeenth of August, at nineteen fifty-five. At uh, not not particularly fifty-nine, so not not a ripe old age. But uh, yeah, some great memories. A great a great player. A great a great fullback. And you say there's uh, we don't uh, we don't let's face it. They don't see many defenders getting the sort of credit they deserve, do they? Over you know even even now. Uh, Defenders don't get much uh, much credit, do they? But they get perhaps get a little bit more than they did in those days. But uh, thanks for joining me anyway for this uh, this look at the incredible Sam or Sammy Cookson, a true footballing legend. And, and as I say, it's great to see defenders getting mentioned and getting 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 the kudos they deserve. Please join me next time. We'll look at another one.